how do you think how have we got so lost as a species when it comes to health and food what, what happened we've been lied to we've been lied to and deceived and sold a load of crap and poisoned low level poisoned for decades low level poisoned mm -hmm. with herbicides pesticides the chemical corporations unregulated or self-regulated have just mm. sprayed us like lab rats mm. i mean since the second world war when mm. they used <laughs> they were like hmm what are we going to do with all these bombs and all this all these nitrogen bombs i know let's make some artificial fertilizer and set <laughs> these farmers and yeah. it, which inadvertently killed the soil biome the uh, the bugs in the soil and then of course you need to do something to get the plants to grow so you just got to feed them and then you get illness and then you've got to pesticide mm. that's just a disaster yep. farming and the government has done everything in its power it seems to me to break up small family businesses and as we know we can see that from the rona but this has been happening mm. for decades and decades in the farming mm. industry with cheap imports coming in and undercutting small farmers and mm. the milk you know the milk industry and the and the, the yep. wool. No, nobody wanting any of those marvelous products. And of course, you know, milk, pasteurized milk and pasteurized dairy products are completely indigestible. Completely, we need fermented foods, mm. fermented kefir, yogurts, sour cream. You know, cheeses, mm. all of that beautiful. Then we mm. can eat it. It's no wonder that half the world's lactose intolerant because you can't digest pasteurized dairy mm. particular mm. so yeah. yeah why have we got how have we got ourselves in this mess <sighs> it's a really good question mm. we've been t we have been lied to though you know ansel keys who came up with that hypothesis the heart diet hypothesis mm. don't eat saturated fat or it's going to give you a heart attack yes well, I it's in Natasha, dr natasha's book i remember that um, and that was that written really on behalf right. of the pharmaceutical companies wasn't it absolutely yeah and and it's still held up to this day you know modern doctors still kind of believe in in um cholesterol being this big bad you know enemy of people and it's anything but and you know what's the food that's got the highest level of cholesterol in it is go on caviar <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah what does that tell you exactly, yeah, exactly. yeah yeah mm. Okay, so um, there might be some of my viewers now that are thinking, what's all this GAPS thing going on? So <laughs> could you explain to my viewers exactly what GAPS is and what it stands for? And you've got the floor. Okay, so GAPS is an acronym of Gut and Psychology Syndrome. And there's another book, a blue book, Gut and Physiology Syndrome where Dr. Nasha, it got to Natasha Campbell McBride, who is the guru behind this whole system, this whole nutritional protocol. Um, she's expanded upon her initial book. And she wrote that book because her son got mm -hmm. vaccine damaged. Her own son became autistic after he was vaccinated. And she was a, a neurological surgeon in Russia right really big brain neurological surgeon you know and then and then she's like i'm in the medical profession i get my son vaccined and vaccinated and then that was that and then so she went back to medical school did another medical degree in gut workings and nutrition and then she used her ancestral heritage the wisdom of her ancestral heritage to develop this way of eating so lots of um fermented foods lots of fermented vegetables, fermented dairy, lots of soups and stews and lovely rich foods, very high in fat. But what we're doing on GAPS is we're healing leaky gut. I'm sure a lot of your people or some of them may have heard of leaky mm. gut maybe. Well, I'll just explain that really quickly. You know, your gut lining is, we're like a tube. There's the entrance, there's the exit, and we're like a tube and it's lined with these villi, these kind of little hairs, which have cells on them. And then even those cells have got little hairs on them as well, actually. And um, so it's like the surface area of a football pitch is absolutely massive. It's your first line of defense and it's only one cell thick. And it's what stops any poisons that might get in there from actually getting into your system. Mm. It's almost like you're inside and your gullet there is, it's like the outside still, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But some of the foods we're eating, or I mean, lots of things can damage this one cell thick 
layer, lots of things can damage it. Taking pharmaceuticals, taking paracetamol regularly, taking any kind of pharmaceutical, taking the birth control pill, just breathing these days is enough to get you toxic. You know, the foods are contaminated with micro doses of pesticides and herbicides. Everyone's, everyone's ingested it. Glyphosate mm. is just despicable glyphosate. Uh, talking of glyphosate, sorry to interrupt, but um, I've heard recently that glyphosate is being chucked or it's actually inside e10 fuel this new fuel that everyone's using i can't remember exactly how it's got into there but basically now everyone is driving down the road chucking out glyphosate everywhere. so everyone's breathing it in you know it's everywhere mm. and it does yep. terrible things to us um, anyway mm. we're gonna we need to protect ourselves so um even some fairly innocuous foods, even if you did have biodynamic grain, you know, and it's well fermented, it still has levels of um, plant toxins in it, lectins. Um, lectins, phytates, they're anti-nutrients, anti-enzymes. But anyway, they can melt the tight junctions between these cells. These are the cells on your gut. And, and if, the, if the junctions between the cells get melted away by all of these toxins and stuff, suddenly you've got no line of defense. And anything that's in your gut can get into your bloodstream. Is it sorry? Is it the oxalates that are like little tiny shards of glass? Mm, yes. They? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and guess what? I mean, one of the foods with the highest levels of oxalates in it is. Do can you guess? Spinach. Yes. And then Popeye the Sailor Man made sure that everyone was eating plenty of spinach mm. from the nineteen thirties. Mm. and getting leaky gut syndrome into the bargain definitely right. yeah yeah so there's mm. some some foods that really we shouldn't be eating even potatoes they're really quite high in oxalates I've, and we I've all heard about um berries are berries high in oxalates because i love berries and i grow them at my allotment and i yeah. absolutely adore berries and um, everything should be had in moderation and seasonally mm. and you know great have some berries but if you shouldn't be eating berries every day just because you can get them from the supermarket mm. And maybe you eat, maybe you grow your own spinach, and maybe you only eat it for once, you know, two, every for two weeks in spring or something. Mm. Okay, it's not so bad. But if you're every day spinach salad or every day spinach smoothie with almond milk, another one, almond milk, massively high in oxalates, you'd just mm. be ripping your your gut to shreds mm -hmm. on a on a microscopic level. But still, you don't you don't really don't need it. And of course, all all of this information that you're coming out with is pretty much the complete opposite to what we're told in the legacy mainstream media mm -hmm. isn't it? which are really kind of pushing people towards uh, a plant-based diet yeah um which which i've tried i i um i was a vegetarian for about a year when i was about 16 years old i think it was um and every time i smelt a sausage roll <laughs> <laughs> oh it's just like no I, I, it was a real struggle so i only lasted a year um, and as a guitar teacher, I've had quite a lot of teenage students, um, especially over the last few years, that have, that have said to me, you know, oh, Paul, I'm going to be a vegetarian, I'm going to be a vegan. And um, and, I, and I kind of started thinking about it again until I came across Natasha Campbell McBride. And I'm so pleased that I did now, yeah. because for the, re uh, the reasons you just stated, really, uh, a plant based diet for, for the vast majority of people, I think, is a really bad move. Really bad there are no people on the whole of the planet who eat a purely plant-based diet i don't yeah, care what anyone says there are people in india who eat mostly vegetarian but when they can get their hands on some duck eggs and some yeah. ghee they do well there, there are so many indian people that i think if they ate animals there'd be no animals in india after about a week probably i would imagine because there's over a billion indian people aren't there so it's, it, from that point of view, it's just not going to happen. But as you say, I mean, the the, uh, the Indian cow is sacred, isn't it? For, and, and it's because of the ghee and the butter and the, the animal fats that they get uh, from their diet that way. So, <clears throat> But, you know, who made it sacred? A religion. What's religion? Where did religion come from? Who says you're not supposed to do what? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, there's a whole vegan agenda. It's an agenda, the vegan thing. Mm. it's an agenda to weaken us so that our mm. bodies are weak so that then therefore our minds get weak and then we can't mm. actually focus on what we want to focus on we're easily led like a good sheeple and uh, it, you know there's not so much resistance to this mm. believable totalitarian takeover 